Environment, Social and Governance, or ESG for short, is a factor-based way of evaluating companies or investments' sustainability rating. You know, one of those things every company will soon use to promote their stock. Is the rating system any good? And should you care at all when you invest? Welcome back to another video. Uh, today we're talking ESG investing, a big, big trend in 2020 and probably going forwards as well. If you want to see more videos on the stock market, subscribe, hit the notification bell. If you have any questions, drop me a comment. Now, um, sustainability and climate change are very complex topics, and I'm not going to talk about them specifically in this video. I'll stick to the actual ESG rating of stocks, uh, which is a way to evaluate how sustainable a company is making its money. And it's something investors have become more and more um, aware of. And a lot of big funds like pension funds or state-run funds and um, uh, institutional investors and investment uh, companies uh, are actually forced or uh, have been have started to actually take ESG into consideration when they make investments. So this is relevant uh, whether you like it or not. Now, the idea behind the system is to uphold transparency and to hold companies responsible for the way they make money by giving them an ESG score. Uh, a high score might help attract new investors. A low score might, uh, might scare new investors away. And as I said, some funds are ag actually obligated to follow this rating systems. Now, do keep in mind that all rating systems are flawed and nothing, no issue is black and white. And just because a company has a low ESG score does not mean it's a bad company. It does not mean it's a bad investment and vice versa. If it has a high score, it does not mean you should invest in the company. I think this is a pretty decent system. So let's go ahead, go ahead and look what this is all about. So the E stands for environment. So this is to what degree the company's operations affects the world's uh, habitats and natural resources. So stuff like land and water usage, impacts on biodiversity and carbon emissions are contributing factors here. The S stands for social, which is to what degree the company upholds fair treatment of human capital and taking responsible for their products. So stuff such as discrimination, consumer protection and uh, um, human and animal rights are important issues here. So if a company has lawsuits and scandals piling up, they're probably going to score really low on this one. The last one, G stands for governance, which is how, uh, which is basically the integrity of the company and how a company is run in order to uphold the integrity and fairness. So um, uh, executive versus employee compensation, um, discrimination, um, uh, corruption in the board, you know, stuff like this are contributing factors here. So this is really how, how pure the intentions are of the management and you can see that in the way they treat their employees for example. Um, now the scoring system usually goes from the one I saw which is the MSCI rating uh, which is was a great one you can find almost all major companies there it goes from triple C to triple A in between you got B double B A and double A. Um, now it doesn't score independently on environment, social and governance. It just gives a total score. Uh, so some examples of ratings here. Microsoft actually scores a triple A. It scores high on everything except carbon emissions. Uh, I'm not sure why, uh, which is just average. Ford scores a B. It scores low on product safety, uh, quality and carbon footprints. Amazon scores a triple B. It scores low on labor management. There's a lot of controversy about, you know, uh, the uh, the envir work environment over at Amazon. Royal Dutch, which is actually an oil company, scores an A. Uh, it scores low on biodiversity and land use because they take habitats and, and uh, extract oil from those areas. Nextera Energy scores a triple A. It scores high on carbon emissions, 
renewable energy and water stress. So uh, two triple A's there. I believe there are only four of them. Uh, so as you can see, you know, a tech company can score a triple A, although it's not producing any renewable energy or making electric cars. And a traditional car maker and oil company can score fairly high, um, uh, although they are perceived as really uh, bad companies. And so I, I think this goes to show that the system um, looks at every company on a case by case basis. So they don't just uh, give all oil companies uh, a triple C and car companies a triple B. They look at every company individual. And, you know, a, a, a company is not bad just because it produces oil, right? P producing oil is not a problem in itself or producing a car is not a problem in itself. So it's really how the company is run, not necessarily what industry they're in. So at each end of the scale, the triple A's I could find were Microsoft, Nextera Energy, Salesforce and Agilent. So as I can see, these companies have very low footprints. Uh, they're tech companies, so you know they don't they don't use a lot of resources. Nextera Energy is renewable energy. The terrible scores I could find were Wells. These are all triple C's or triple B's. Were Wells Fargo? I mean, they have so many uh, scandals, uh, so they score low on integrity. You've got Pfizer for unfair wages, and then News Corp for lack of board integrity. There's like a bunch of people who have like three different roles in the company and on the board and in the management. So it's, it's all just a mess. So as you can see, the companies with really high score, again, it's not just tobacco and weapons companies. It's actually sort of scumbag companies that doesn't treat their workers fairly or gives way too much money to, to, to their management. So again, uh, this is something I like to see. Uh, where I feel like every company has been judged individually in a fair way. Uh, and then on to some interesting scores, some companies that I know you guys are dying to, to know the score of. Lockheed Martin, the big bad wolf, the world's uh, largest defense and uh, weapon system manufacturer, scores an A. Uh, it's actually known for its scholarship programs, uh, def well, various school programs. It has very few scandals. Um, it, it's run in a very ethical way. There's almost uh, no uh, controversy around the company and it doesn't have a, a big uh, carbon footprint, believe it or not, because they don't produce as much as some of the heavier manufacturers. You've got Tesla, uh, scores an A. Uh, it's obviously a leader in electricity storage and EVs. Um, JP Morgan scores a triple B. It scores really low on financial product safety governance and financial system liability. So they've been doing some, you know, they're not sure how their interest is aligned with customers and shareholders, for example. Uh, Equinor, which is actually one of the largest oil producers in the world, it's the largest company in the country I live, Norway, actually scores a triple A. Um, you know, just in 2019, I believe this company, oil company, actually made the largest investment in renewable energy of any company in 2019. So they're really turning things around and it's a leader in carbon emissions, believe it or not, uh, biodiversity, health and safety and corruption. So this company is run, in, uh, run in, in a great way. It treats its employees fair and just because they're producing oil doesn't mean that the company itself is actually has a big carbon footprint. So those are some interesting scores for you. Now for these ratings, I'll continue with a couple more. I use the MSCI, which is the world's leading sort of stock market indicator, indice company. Uh, their, their score was really great. Uh, they explained what the company was lagging in, what they were average at, and what they were a leader in. And then they give an, an overall number score. Some other website did like, you know, 0 to 100 or 0 to 1000. But this website was fantastic. And I could actually search for individual companies. So it made it all great. And different systems uh, put ways on different things. 
So some ESG scores don't really necessarily look at the environmental impact. They look at the sustainability of the business itself, economically and management wise. So there's a bunch of different systems. And uh, now I thought it would be cool to see how my portfolio is doing pretty well. It's actually all A's and B's. Amazon triple B, which is good. Tesla and A, uh, Microsoft triple A, Alibaba triple B, Nextera Energy triple A, Waste Management triple B, Activision triple B and Mongo double B. Uh, so I'm not talking about bra size, bra size sizes here. This is my portfolio. Did pretty fantastic. No C's um, uh, or, or any lower than that. So that was great. Now, there are also some ETFs that you can invest in. Um, you know, these, these ETFs don't necessarily follow MSCI's ESG score. Uh, they are all sort of uh, managed on an individual basis. But you have Vanguard's ESGV, which excludes adult entertainment, tobacco, fossil fuels, nuclear power, I don't know why, weapons and gambling. So again, I don't think this is done on a case by case basis. This is just a blanket thing where they ban all tobacco companies, all nuclear power companies, no matter how great the companies are. So a bit weird on that one. Then you have SUSE, which is slightly stricter than ESGV. So they've taken out a lot of big corporations and they've gone with quite small, nimble, like mostly tech companies or companies like Ecolab or Nextera Energy that is actually doing something good for the environment. Then you have DSI, which seeks out the US most uh, socially responsible companies. So they're probably mostly looking at work condition and executive pay compensation, for example. Then you have carbon, which is low carbon footprint companies. But I, I don't think necess that's necessarily difficult to find. Most Silicon Valley um, tech streaming companies are quite low carbon footprint. But, you know, uh, you know, each to their own, I guess. Now, besides these, you can obviously find a lot of tech, software, cloud computing, gaming and streaming ETFs that I'm sure have a very high ESG score and low carbon footprint. So the ETFs, I'm still not uh, completely sold on those. Uh, I'm not a big fan of ETFs anyways, but if that's your thing, these are the ones you should have a look at. Now, in closing, um, I think balance is uh, the most important thing. And I think when you invest, it's first and foremost, uh, you should invest in the companies that will produce the highest returns. That is your main goal as an investor. But companies showing great sustainability should also lead to better performance of the company because it is, uh, it is managing its resources better. So this is not just about finding, you know, hippie stocks uh, that are green and good for the environment. These are great uh, businesses that are run, run well. But either way, um, do your own research, uh, be an individual thinker, a critical thinker, be a stock picker and decide where your money is invested. Don't just put your money in an index fund look at the companies you invest in, make sure you know what you're getting into because you're actually giving your money to a company and helping them become bigger. So do ask yourself if this is a company you actually want to invest in. We can't get enough of individual thinkers. So that's my take on the ESG system. I think it actually looks very promising. Uh, I was quite surprised by some of the scores, which I think is good. Uh, because I thought every oil company would have a triple C, but then I find some that actually score really well, which means they've been looking into each company individually. So hope you find this video helpful. Uh, let me know what you think of this system. As always, I'll see you guys in my next video.